Hello everybody, welcome. Well, good to be back with you. Yes, it's been about a month since I uploaded a clip, hasn't it? Yes, well I had my family over at Christmas time uh, from England. My son and my daughter, my son's girlfriend and her daughter. and So we like had a house full of guests. So things kind of came to a standstill <laughs> in pottery. But anyway, I'm back out here now. I've been I'm desperately behind with stock, so I'm just trying to build up some stock and uh, yeah, just having a, as always, you know, mugs and things like steins and tankards, etc., are always needed, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so. So that's what it is, more tankards, and I do want to get actually down to making some, um, I think in the last clip I was going to make some casseroles, but I never got round to it because of, because of this and that, so well, that's something I do want to do as well, some lidded forms. Yeah, so these tankards, these are a pound. They are five and a half inches in height, thrown, thrown to a gauge. Which is just a piece of stick really, isn't it? The gauge. might be. Let me just, oops, let me just move that there a bit like that. Yeah. Yeah, these are kind of interesting shape, aren't they, the tankers? Of course it's an old English medieval kind of design. In fact I've got one I've got one of the old um, St. Ives tankards uh, just over there. I'll show you after I finish this one. I'll show it to you. That's one of the well I'll explain in a second. I got it in my hand. So yeah, useful tool, one of these throwing sticks. If you don't have a decent throwing stick, you're going to be a half-baked potter. <laughs> and make sure you get a decent throwing stick. If you haven't got a decent throwing stick and you want one, I can sell you one, or you can make them yourself. They're not difficult to make. you do need one. I couldn't be a potter without a decent throwing stick, I'll tell you. Yeah. So, there it is. Don't forget, leather your rims, very important. Don't use a sponge on the rim. Use a chamois leather.
So dry your hands and lift them off like that, you see. If you do that, you'll be able to lift any pot off the wheel, pretty much. Okie dokie, let me, yeah, let me show you that St. Ives tankard. Yeah, St. Ives tankard, this is made at my grandfather's pottery. This particular one, in fact, yes, this was made in 1966. Let me just show it to you. That, let me just move this out here a bit and get it more in the light. That is a genuine St. Ives tankard. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's got the scroll on the bottom and the, the thumb rest on the top there for your, for your thumb. Um, it's basically fairly plain. It's just got a couple of lines here, as you can see. Uh, it has an iron slip glaze and then a white milky glaze over the top like some of those ones and it's got written on it Foey Cornwall 1966 and then it's got the St. Ives stamp under there yeah so I mean my tankards are not exactly the same as that but um, line here just just a little bit concave there you see because that's where your lower lip rests just there and this ridge here gives stability to the, the top of the pot, keeps it round, you see. Plus, if you look at it from the side, you see the line there follows on straight down the handle, you see. So there it is. St. Ives. St. Ives tanker. Let's Let's quickly do one more. Just get this thing. Let's get this back a bit. Let me just pull it in for a bit of detail. I know you've seen me do these a million times, but well, that's what I happen to be doing today. So let's do one more quickly. Come on, leech. You know, when I haven't done any throwing for a little while, like I haven't really been in a pottery for the best part of a month making, doing any production things anyway, making. I was outside doing some stuff actually in the kiln shed, doing some improvements out there, but not very interesting for you guys to watch. So we didn't film that, but yeah. So when I come back in the pottery after being away a bit, I, I always go back, do something that I'm familiar with, you see, start back with something I'm familiar with. So they're centering it, coning, coning up and centering down, opening out the, the floor, the base of the pot, you see, like that. Get it a little wider to start with, you see. All right, and then I collar it in a bit like that. Put it in. Okay, and now. Just pull up the sides. Dee, 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 dee. Just keep it in at the top, you see, here. Always keep it in there. Give it water. Make sure your pot is nicely lubricated because that is a key, isn't it? Keep it in at the top there. And these guys are a little bit wide at the base, aren't they? Bring it up to the gauge. Okay. Don't hit the gauge. Just bring it up to it. Now the top here, you see, I'm curling it back in. You see just there by doing that with my thumb, you see. So now I'm gonna create that 
that little ridge there I just spoke about, you see. Alright. These do these do want to be made wider at the base. Right, now I'm going to take my throwing stick, put it in down at the base here. Make sure you put an undercut in at the base there. That is that is vitally important that you, you have an undercut there. Because that will help you to, f to fettle the pot afterwards, you see. Then I'm using the stick as a kind of rib, just just to clean off a touch, the, you see, get that off there. Alright, now look at it, now I'm thinking that he's gone a bit wide at the top, so narrow him down. You don't want him wide at the top, you see. Always the, the bottom here is wider than the top. And that's because when you put them in the cupboard, you see, you don't want the lips to crash together. So they touch, they touch down here, you see. Like that. Okay, now if you've got water inside, sponge on a stick. Get a sponge on a stick, okay? And you don't want a, a, stun, a, a sponge on a pole, okay? You don't want a sponge on a pole, you want a sponge on a stick. Take note of the difference. <laughs> Some people seem to have like sponges on poles and they're not very... They're not very subtle and they're not very good when you're trying to throw a smaller pot, you see. So. Just one, cast your eye over it, you see, like that, a little bit. It just needs a little bit of a touch here or there. Clean back the water here on the wheel head, okay, before you wire off. Take your wire, and as you take it, clean it at the same time, like that, you see. So he lives here, all right, so take him, and as you take him, pull like that. Get your thumbs into action, slow the wheel down, this firmly down on the wheel head and straight through like that. And back back in his back in the stable, back to where he belongs. You see, you always put your tools back in the same place. That's a key thing if you want to be a production product. You've got to put everything back in the same spot. Okay, so I wipe my hands. Now I wouldn't necessarily always Maybe we pull it back a bit. I wouldn't necessarily always uh, get off the wheel to take a pot off either, but I, I have in this case. So, dry, ha clean hands, but they haven't got to be like immaculately clean. Just get the, get them dried so you can you can lift, and then clasp the pot like that. You see, learn how to get pots off the wheel without, don't be one of these people that throws pots. Every pot you throw, you know, like you, you've got to throw it on a bat. Or you've got one of these things that's got like a square thing here. And every one you throw, you've got to, after you've thrown it, you've got to stick this in and dig it out and then, no, 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 that's a waste of time. And you really want to, um, Learn to lift your pots off. Are you up for the challenge? <laughs> are you up for the challenge or are you going to... Yeah, you may drop a few, but you'll learn with dry hands. And if you've, if you've used your throwing stick and you clean the slurry off the side of your pot, I'll tell you what, that pot will just come off. It'll be like magnetic stuck to your hands. It'll just lift off and you'll be able to put it there. Have a go. <laughs> yeah, push your boundaries a bit. If you've always been used to doing stuff in a certain way, maybe the place where you go and learn and do your ceramics is, that's the way it's been taught, that's the way your instructor says to do it. 
and but I'm telling you there may be a different way a better way it's always like you know it's like with tap centering people think it's it's a, a wonderful thing and but they fall back on their their giffin grip or whatever they call it but you know tap centering is the best it's the best way anyway hey good to be back with you folks i've missed uh, making videos and etc it's always fun making videos and just you know i don't these videos i do are not really planned they're totally off the cuff and i don't edit them at all they're put up there online in their raw state as as they are shot some people may think they're too long and i waffle too much and if i do i apologize um you just have to fast forward it if you don't like listening to me but anyway thanks for joining us and uh, please visit my website simonleachpottery.com and uh yeah Keep practicing. God bless you all. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that.